Good evening. Hi, people. How are you doing? It's Wednesday, 4th of January. Um, so first thing I want to say, Happy New Year to everybody. It's late, so that's why I'm talking quite quietly. And in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the extended version of the track, Don't Let Me Go. So this is the from the album Night Tales, and it was available in the original format um, just before Christmas. There is a Volume 1 extended collection which has been available on Track Source. And what's coming is the complete extended collection. It's available now exclusively on Bandcamp, but it's coming on streaming services soon. So it's probably a really good time to take a look at deconstructing this track, which actually started off as an idea in Native Instruments Machine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the, the sounds that have been used, um, take you through some of the decisions that were made in terms of the composition, and also um, just really take a look at um, one of the other things I've been doing with mixing recently, which is really getting back to that old school kind of desk sound with the SSL 4000. Um, so that's a plugin alliance plugin that I'm using a lot again. You know, I tend to rotate things, but that's certainly where I've come back. So what we'll do is, firstly, I want to focus on this synth sound. And the reason is because, as I said, this idea was originally put together inside Native Instruments Machine. This has got a really unique texture to it. So this is coming from a, it's a reactor ensemble going to bring this up here and it's called Prism. This is not one that I use a lot deliberately, but what happened was I was searching inside machine for instruments by the, the tags, by the categories of sound, more so than by the actual instrument itself. And it came up and there's something really magic about this. It felt like it had a unique texture to it, like a synth brass, but with a, an edge to it. So here are the chords very very distinctive chord progression and what I've done here is I've backed this up with a bass line and um, the project's all over the place here in the order um, really mixed up usually I tend to do stuff in a much more organized fashion but for some reason I didn't hear so here's a bass this bass is another reactor instrument and this is the TRK-01 bass. I've used this a lot. So that's complementing the chords. And this, is, this track's very much based on this progression. Let's take a look at the drums. Um, what's interesting here is, is that these are bounced audio. So I created them inside machine and in order to get some of my ideas out of machine quickly, I've actually been bouncing quite a lot out as audio. It's not the way that I have traditionally worked because traditionally I've, I've worked by using MIDI and programming. So a lot of the videos that I've put together have shown that and demonstrated it. But with this album project, because I would say about 50% of the, the tracks were started in machine. I wanted a quick and easy way to get them out, so I just exported the audio. So this is literally a stereo pair of the drums. So I can't show you the individual sounds or anything. Um, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, but there are, of course, some other elements that are coming in here. Um, so in terms of drums and percussion, there is the conga over here but once again funny enough this is bounced too I do remember playing that in into machine so I remember playing that in using one of the percussion kits in there there's clearly a lot of space around there in fact perhaps what I should do one day is go back to those demos and 
perhaps do a feature exclusively in Machine of those so people can get a sense for what's going on. Okay, so there are a couple of things I want to backtrack on. So firstly, this sinister sustained kind of high string, it's almost like a synthesizer. Um, this is coming from Massive, the original Massive, and this is a preset called Aphex Jeff Strings which adds this sense of tension <clears throat> on the intro. And that's backed up by another one, another string here in this breakdown. So I'm going to bring this up. Getting some weird graphical issues because I'm dragging from another screen to this. Ignore those. So that's the string ensemble. And really, there's something very important about this sound. Um, let's solo this. It's got a real nice, kind of light, arpeggiated texture to it. And this is coming from the UVI Falcon instrument, a preset called Welcome Martin. Love that. And by the way, there's a sustained chord here which is creating tension once again. So when everything comes back, it feels kind of fresh, even though you've already heard this before. Let's also take a look at this other pad here, this Moody pad. This is another UVI Falcon patch. Here we go. This is the DXFM pad 2. It's got lovely kind of warmth and richness to it and plenty of movement as well. So the two of these work really well together. And then there's something else that comes in over here, this bass op. Another falcon instrument. Here we go. Dirty Money 1.1. This is an incredible patch, actually. I'm going to solo here. really does make this section. So this is this breakdown, the pads are evolving, then that bass comes in and then it goes straight into, in essence, this is like a hook, um, you know, this rhythmic element with the bass, with the synth trumpet. And of course, um, you know, because I bounced the drums out, if I wanted to get just a kick, I had to edit, which is what I did there. I took it out of the composite drums and isolated that kick. And just repeated it. There's a fill, clap fill. Classic drum machine. This is from another UVI collection, the Beatbox Anthology 2. So in terms of the musical elements, it's, it's a split between the native instruments components and the UVI. And I'm just going to stop here just to talk about this. So, you know, I explained that the original idea was produced entirely in machine. So what we're looking at is at the moment, these elements were the machine elements, including the breath sample as well. You know, this stuff was all machine. But when I decided to export everything out, I, I felt like I needed a contrast. And so that's when I started introducing new instruments. So the UVI, for example, it wasn't existing Falcon inside machine. But that's one of the benefits of bouncing stuff out and taking MIDI out as well, which is another thing that I did. I dragged the MIDI of the chords, bringing it into something like Ableton Live for arrangement. Then you can start complementing on top and bringing some new capabilities. And here we're building up to um, a section where there are some um, vocals. Okay. And what I'm doing here is, is I'm creating a sense of growth in terms of the musicality there's a cello that comes in here i'm going to solo this for you so this is from the contact factory library volume two this is chili this has got a real nice richness to it that I combined 
with the, the other musical elements. Let me bring these on, so the chords and the bass. And for extra drama, some high strings here. So this is kind of informing you that something's coming up. And what it is, is that vocal hook. So let's come back. we've got call and response again so you've got one vocal um, and then another vocal here almost responding to it so call and response alternating and this is part of a kind of it's like a conversation it's part of the story um, you know the album is very much story based and now what happens is, is this leads into a reflection back on the intro breakdown with pads, but then goes off in a new direction. And you can see this percussive section here. So this is where it, it takes a twist. And if you remember that bass texture from the UVI, UVI Falcon, it, it really comes back here in a big way. So now it goes kind of um, deep Afro tech, almost tribal. And I'll come back to this percussion in a second. And in a way, this is kind of like a middle eight. So it's a shift, but then we return back to what we had before. Although it's a lot more stripped back. So let's take a look at the percussion and also these hits. So if you notice, this is actually a sustained note. This percussion is being triggered. So it's a, a loop essentially. And this is coming from inside the complete bundle, you get this, which is called West Africa. I'm using the Rumba collection and I stripped back some of the elements um, on the mixer. You can kind of work with this as well, but this is a loop um, that is being triggered. The variety comes from the, the, you know, the, the hits that I'm playing on top. So let's take a look at this. Let me take away that percussion and focus just on the hits. So these were played in. It's quite hard to see everything if I don't kind of glue these together. So on here, contact seven once again. This is, and once again, forgive the, um, the user interface, it's because I dragged from the other monitor. This is Action Strikes, which is a really great collection of cinematic hits. And these were just played in on top. And actually at the moment we've lost the percussion. So something's happened there. Maybe something that I've done. Um, let me just come over here. 
close this. I'm going to switch to another one and back onto that rumba. Let's see how we get on now. There we go. So I must have clicked on something that stopped it from triggering. I've also got a crash, which is quite cinematic. This is coming from the Contact Factory Library 2, the orchestral percussion. Because I didn't want to go for the typical 909 crash. I wanted something a bit kind of, I guess, lighter. Um, So we're onto this section again, which is repeating what we had before, but stripping it back a bit. Because the synth trumpet is not existing right now, so it's focusing very much on those drums and the bass. And this time around, the vocals do exist, but they're occurring for a shorter period of time. And then what happens is, is we go much longer on the tribal percussive aspect of the track which is really designed for DJs to work a new tune into so it's quite a journey this track um, yeah it really is something that I just want to pull out that vocal the go I brought it down onto the channel below and added a echo device with a long feedback so we've got that real kind of dubby delay and I wanted that to kind of continue the vocal texture without it being an obvious vocal and once again, we've got those UVI pads coming up. And this is where we go on as the outro of that tribal section with the real heavy bottom end bass from this arp. And it's also got that high frequency tone on there pulsing away in the background that really does help here. And this is a completely long section that was performed in on top of the other elements. Using different notes on the keyboard because they corresponded to different percussive hits. So really that's it on the compositional side. And this, as I said, is when the DJ would be mixing the next track in. Funnily enough, the version on the album, the original kind of shorter version was much shorter um, in comparison and told a slightly different story. Um, but I think this is the best presentation of the track, certainly for DJs. Now I talked about the fact that um, I've been using the BX console again, so I'm going to bring it up. And what I've been doing is placing this on all the individual channels and then also on the master, which is here. Let me bring this one up. This is being used as a summing device, and I use this random all button to create a, a difference in all of the channels used. So that, for me, gives it a feel of an old analog desk which is something that I, I really enjoy having. And on this one, the mastering duties are being provided by Ozone 10. And um, this, I used the automatic um, mastering process, but then made some customizations. I can't remember exactly what I did here, um, but I did make some adjustments. But these are the individual kind of plugins as such that are used. And um, I've played it on a whole variety of systems. It sounds great. So that's it. It's a track called Don't Let Me Go. It's from the album Night Tales, and it's available now. 
but it will be an extended format available um, on a wider range of platforms in a, in a couple of weeks. But if you do have any questions about um, the video, please put some comments underneath. I don't have tons of time these days um, to be able to respond, but if I can, I will do.